Hello and welcome to the Rose Rehash. I'm Jared Freed. We are here every now Thursday night because of the election this week, but every every night after the Bachelorette, we come on to recap the show, to have a special guest. Tonight I'm joined by Kay Brown from Betches and The Bachelor at K York City. I'm so excited to have her here. And then I'm going to give out some awards, but let's get right to it. Uh, episode, I think this is four of The Bachelorette, and we have come to the end of Claire's journey. That's right. Okay? I call these episodes editor's episodes because we were kind of, this is one of those episodes where we didn't get a lot, but we got it strung along to get to the places we needed to go. We needed to see Chris Harrison grill Claire. We needed to see the boys get kind of brought up to speed. We needed to see Claire confront the boys. We needed to see how Dale would take becoming her partner when this becomes real. We needed to see Tasha get introduced. That could have been done in 20 minutes, to be honest. But due to editing, this is an editor's episode, they went through and they kept us in. They kept us in. They wanted to see us kind of squirm. And and we're going to get to a few of these moments along the way. But we start the episode. Chris goes into Claire's presidential suite at the La Quinta, which the La Quinta more and more looks like a neighborhood that you wouldn't roll down your windows in. You, you Like someone homeless would come up to your car and you'd be like, okay, yeah, 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 I... I no change, all cards only. That's kind of what the La Quinta is starting to look like. But we're at the La Quinta. She's in the presidential suite. Chris Harrison comes in, and he seems mad. He's doing the dad knock. He's like, Claire, open up. Goes in. Claire's there. She's like, well, yes, Chris. Oh, I I called. I Did I refer to Dale as my fiance? Did I? And Chris is like, don't fuck with me, Claire. Like, Chris Harrison swore tonight. Let me just say that right now. Chris Harrison used the swear word. That is as weird as, that's like when mom comes down, catches you drunk, and she's like, I will not have this shit fuck. And you're like, wow, she didn't even use the swear word right. Like, Chris Harrison used the swear word, and it was so unnatural that we we're all like, are we all in trouble? But no, Claire seemingly is a little bit of trouble. So he says, let's hear it. I got to know it. Do you know each other prior to the show? It's the question the audience is asking. That's why Chris Harrison is the best. He leads you up to the moment where he can ask the question that you've been yelling at the TV for three episodes. He says, Claire, have you spoken to him on Instagram? Have there been DMs? And Claire, I don't buy her story, but it is a story where Claire is very good at, and listen, she, I'm not to promote someone else's show, but she's on Instagram Live right now. She's very good at taking over the narrative and making it her own. She's done it throughout all of these episodes of The Bachelorette. She has taken... And listen, we don't know what's happened to Claire earlier in her life. All we know is we saw Juan Pablo be an asshole to her. We watched Joseph be an asshole to her. And we watched her kind of vaguely references re reference these moments in her life where we kind of back away. And we just have to believe her. Okay? So we have to believe her and go, hey, we know you've had tough times. Okay, we're not going to say a word. So she wards you off with this big fire torch of I've had struggle and then tries to get you on her side to, you know, up, and we don't know what it is. So it's hard to be like, take a side. You have to go, well, she said she's had a tough time dating. It could be more serious. It could be less. We don't know. All we know is we've witnessed her be strong on a prior season. And now that's kind of her thing. So when Chris Harrison says to her, Hey, have you been talking over Instagram? Claire, the master manipulator of a storyline goes, well, when COVID happened, I just never knew how I would love again. And I started following all these men on social media, just watching, you know, just taking a look at their lives, just peering through, through the glass. And it's like, Claire, you have a blue check mark. We can see who watches our stories when we meet someone on a dating app. These guys can see when you watch their stories. Did you create, and, and listen, Claire 
could have said, well, I created a burger account and I started looking. That's not what happened. She went and looked at all their stories, watched their lives, and she claims, let's take her at her word. At her word is actually insane. She goes, I watched Dale from afar and I just thought, I kind of fell in love with his social media activity. And you're going, wow. And all of us can't say anything to that because that is a very 2020 thing. Everyone sitting at home has fallen in love with someone's social media profile. So again, Claire, in the land of right, we cannot disagree. And she goes, and then by the time I got here, the, the person jumped off the Instagram account. And I was like, Dale, I know your mom. I know your dad. I know the whole family. I know the sisters. And all of us are like, you can't disagree. Claire wins again. So Chris buys the story. He says, are you in love? I'm in love. I got to talk to this guy. Chris now goes to the boys. These 16 men, seven, uh, the 16 men are completely clueless. Like, at no point did she, did he ever, did, did, did the guys look at, at Dale and go, hey, you guys are together, right? Like, at no point, they're in a hotel where they don't have a phone, they don't have a TV. No one said to Dale, hey, Dale, how far along are you so I know to back off, dude? Like, that conversation had to have happened. Claire comes in, or Chris comes in, looks at the boys. He's like, no cocktail hour. We're going to have no rose ceremony. And yeah, Dale, I got to talk to you for a second. So it's like, at that point, how do the guys not know? And one of the dudes, it just shows you that everyone should not have an opinion. We have a lot of platforms. We've got Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. The Bachelor should show you how little opinions people should be allowed to air. Because Blake, Mr. Beardcomb, is all of a sudden like, yeah, no, no, no. Claire's definitely not with Dale. And it's like, dude, it's happening before your eyes. He takes Dale aside. Chris explains to Dale, hey, Claire's kind of, kind of, you know, is, has fallen for you. She wants to go on a date with you. Okay, so now date is going to go, uh, Dale's going to go on the date with Claire. Uh, they go on this dinner date. Claire is dressed unbelievable, hot. I'm sure women have a different take on this, but she is dressed for a man's masturbatory dream. She is dressed just like Jessica Rabbit. She is dressed like a cartoon of a woman. She basically is the hourglass. She is all the Disney. She is all the Looney Tunes hot women that we have been trained to get hard for. So this is all, like Claire knows what she's doing. The boobs are out. The ass looks great. She picks, he brings her back. So now he, uh, Claire goes and uh, meets up with Dale. They go to this dinner. And you're kind of finding out that they uh, don't, like, that they're still getting to know each other. Like, they're still on date four because he's like, so what's your dad like? What's your mom like? And she's telling stories. This is very early date stuff, but combined with I'm in love with you, which is like, you know, you sit there watching and it's like, what are we doing here? Like, and at one point, and this is a very bachelor, bachelorette thing. They never say, I love you. They do the softened version. Claire does the version. And it's actually a bad lesson for anyone that's like looking to be with a partner. They do the protective, I love you. She goes, I'm falling for you. And then this is where Dale goes into, I got to buy time. He buys time with his language. He's like, well, I could see through the process of love that I could find love in my heart. He, Dale talks like he's HR talking to Claire about hiring her for love. He's like, in a world where we create a solution where you'd be on the fast track to love and where we actually sign the paperwork, we could push your bonus to next year and maybe find love through that process and with meetings and your manager. And it's like, why are we speaking in these half terms? It's because they're not sure. It's because they're kind of caught up in it. We get past this date. They go back home together. Um, we're assuming they've made love. I mean, the clothes, the, the Jessica Rabbit dress is on the ground. The dog is wiped out. He's like, yeah, I don't know. 
Uh, she feeds me, so I got to stay here. And then they're in bed together. And Claire doesn't even change into clothing to do her face to the camera interview. She's like, oh, I'll just wear my robe. Claire, listen. There's been a lot made of Claire's age. I don't think Claire is an old woman. I don't think that at all. She's 38, 39 on the show. I think she's young and hot and beautiful. But in this moment, nobody has ever looked on at her own apart. No one has ever looked more single aunt than Claire in the robe being like, oh, I just had a fun time with Dale. Oh, and I love his body and oh what a night and then she like sees him off at the door and she's like toodaloo text me on that newfangled phone you have and it's like claire you look like you're in bewitched like you look like um the mom from bewitched it, it, and that's a very old reference but if anyone knows that reference you're laughing right now because she did it's like claire okay the show's still going here so then Chris Harrison is playing the part of best friend, which Chris Harrison does unbelievably well. He comes in and he's like, he comes into Claire's room and he's like, so how did it go? And there's a great line where Claire looks at you and looks at, him, oh, I got to go back. I, I totally forgot the most important part. Dale and Claire have a dance after their dinner and the couple that won Listen to Your Heart is there singing. And it's like, I don't know if I'm the only one that watched that show, but this couple that won Listen to Your Heart has a personality that is the same as this pen, like without ink. Like it's just, there's no, this, this couple has nothing to say. They don't, they don't even look like they like each other. They look like they're playing next to each other over Zoom. And they're playing this song. They they don't even play a cover. They're playing originals. And it's like, oh, get out of here. Dude, this, this, this music career, this duet music career wasn't meant to be. To me, listen to your heart. That couple is the reason COVID's still going. The, the world was like, we can't have you touring. Please, Chris and Bree, stay here. Stay home. Yeah, they they that was my favorite part of the episode because they're singing and all I can imagine is them going, please hire us for your bar mitzvah. We'll do any gig we thought this would be. Our big break it is. Hard to perform during COVID. Like, you kept exa like, waiting. Like, that couple to me is the face of COVID-19. Like, they are just like, they're lost dreams. They're lost opportunity. They remind me of every one of my shows that got canceled. So, okay. So, Dale and Claire, they have sex. We have this big moment. Goodbye, toodaloo. Chris Harrison comes in as the best friend, and he's like, so how'd it go? And you're like, and Chris is every friend that has ever just listened to you without refuting how ridiculous you sound. That Chris is great at that. Like Chris is great at like going, so did, so you said, she's like, I told him I loved him and he didn't run away. And it's like, that's how crazy Claire is that she's like, he didn't run away. And you're like, Okay, that's a win. That's a win to you, not running away. That that's what you. I know she's kind of joking, but like Claire, how, you know, Miss Confidence, Miss, I'm not settling. Like Miss Miss Show Up 2020. Like, come on, Claire. You that's that's why we don't buy Claire as an inspirational, confident figure because she consistently goes from I'm never gonna settle for a man, and all these women that told me I should settle, which. No woman told her she should settle. Stop that. That is a fake story, fake news. So uh, the idea that women in Claire's life were like, just take what you can get, you old hag. You ain't got nothing. Those, those eggs are going to die. That's not what happened. That's not how it goes. She may have felt that from people. People may have said to her, the people she's dating are great people because they thought that from the outside. Just like Claire thought, Dale was the one from an Instagram picture. So let's let's speak in reality, Claire. So she, she, so again, we don't believe your confidence play when you go, and I said I love you, and he didn't run away. <laughs> okay. 
So then Chris Harrison's like, so did he say it back? And she's like, he said, I love you. And it's like, do I have to write, rewind the tape to when Dale was like, yeah, I could kind of sort of, I love you. Okay. So Claire is legitimately writing the rom-com in her head as this is going on. And listen, that's her right. Now Claire is going to break up with all 16 men at once. I got to say... This, I don't know how this would go for a man. I'm wondering how this would go. Like, like I'm just imagining Chris Harrison looking at me and going, so Jared, I'm happy you found the one. Um, but we got 16 women back there and you're going to have to tell them now too. I'd be like, ah, I'm going to get out of here with my new fiance. Tell him I said, peace. Thanks for coming. Like, there's no, it's like these men, they take it hard, but like, what are you going to say? Because Claire gets up there and she's like, um, I am I found my one. And it's like, she kind of, it, it is weird that Claire was sitting there like, where's my congratulations? And it's like, no, there's no congratulations. You just told us all to go fuck ourselves. You made us leave our lives. You made us like leave our jobs. We've been sitting here with no TV, no phone for weeks. We haven't even gotten to talk to you. No, I'm not going to congratulate you. And then one of the guys is like, hey, how about an apology? And one of the guys made this guy sound bad because one guy goes, what about an apology? And she's like, "Should do I?" and then Claire does, this is an asshole douchebag move. When someone says, does the non-apology apology, do you want me to apologize for being a woman? I will not. Do you want me to apologize for trying to find love? I will not. Will I apologize for some of you not enjoying the meals we put out here? If I have to, I will. And it's like, that's not an apology. Yo, hypothetically apologizing is not an apology. And that's what Claire does. But then one of the dudes is like, oh shit, this is how great men are or humans are. He's like, oh, I'm throwing this dude under the bus. Um, and we're going, we're like, this one dude is like, I'm gonna, I, I'm throwing this dude under the bus. And he goes, Claire, I just want to thank you for taking a chance on love. And like, I, my girlfriend Jess was like, yeah, that guy's a good guy. And it's like, I, yeah, it's easy to be a good guy. I want the fucking apology. I used to be a doctor. Like, if I, if I was Dr. Joe, I'd be like, I left someone on the operating table during a pandemic to come here. I deserve you not going, if I, if you felt this way, maybe I'd apologize. No, I deserve even a fake straight up apology. Not, not the, if goblins existed in your dreams, then maybe I could apologize. No, hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry it worked out this way. I'm sorry that my time was taken up by someone that I've fallen in love with. I'm going to enjoy my life with them. I'm going to feel bad for a little bit that a bunch of you came here, but that's the game you signed up for. That's the way you talk to people. That's how you talk to people like an adult. Claire didn't do that. She opted out of adulthood. So now they're going to bring um, Dale over and they're like, okay. Yeah, this Tara's right. Kenny left boy bands he manages to come here. Kenny deserves an apology. The boy band deserve an apology. They are aimless without their manager right now. Okay. So now they're going to bring out. So now Dale is told, hey, man, Claire wants a proposal. And it's like Chris Harrison is just dropping bombs on Dale all day long. He's like, Dale, you're going to do dinner with Claire. She loves you. Dale, you're gonna have to propose. I got Neil Lane on. I got Neil Lane on the phone. He's on Facetime. He's talking too, too close to the camera because he's 85 years old and he can't hear. And it's like Dale. It's like Dale. Claire's off the pill. She wants to have a baby. She's ready to sign a mortgage. And surprise, surprise, her family's here to meet you. It's like give the guy a fucking break. Like give him a minute. And here's where the editor comes in because the editor kind of plays up the idea that Dale might not be on board. I don't believe that. I believe Dale was on board. I do believe that Claire's scared that Dale won't be on board because they kept him away. He doesn't have a phone. He can't be like, I can't wait to see you. So I do believe that Claire's kind of getting in her head. She's sitting here. She's created this narrative where she's never found love and she can't find the guy. And finally, she's put her heart on the line. And now some producers are like, are you okay? And she's like, I just, I'm scared that I, this is too much too soon. And it's like, that is every person's fear. 
Claire represents the audience there. That every woman man has been afraid to be too much too soon for someone that they like. So this all makes sense, but they really play it up because now Chris Harrison comes over and he's like, and he, and Chris Harrison's fucking with her. And, and you do get the sense that Chris is like, I got to get a full episode out of this material because he comes walking up to Claire and he's like, mm, I'm sorry, Claire. And she's like, please, please don't do this to me. I'm literally going to go crazy. And he's like, um, and, and like, I just I kept imagining Chris being like, you're going to give me an engagement. You're going to give me the baby. You're going to give me the marriage. You're going to give me the family. I'm going to get all the exclusives. And it's like, like you ruin it. Chris is eating this up because it's like, you ruined my show. I'm going to, I'm going to make sure I get out of you what I need. Cause he's like, Claire, Claire, I'm sorry to do this, but Dale has fallen Hard in love, he's coming. And it's like, okay, fucking let him out here. Let him get engaged. They get engaged. America collectively doesn't give a shit. America as a country, in my opinion, is like, get rid of them. She ruined the show. Dale and her definitely talked on Instagram. Get them out of our lives. We don't want to hear from her. I don't want to be inspired by her. Get out of here. And now the men are proposed with this proposition the men are like uh chris looks at all the men and is like hey guys if any of you want to leave you're free to go but you're gonna we're gonna have a different show for anyone that stays and it's like the idea that the men who applied to the bachelorette are like i don't know i'll have to figure out how this agrees with my morals is like crazy like the <laughs> like the idea that these men are like well i came here for Cla for a one in, one in 31 shot at claire they're all staying they all stay the one guy i feel bad for is the football player who basically said his parents were like awful to him growing up and like it's like dude <laughs> it's like I, he's like i don't know i might go home and it's like how are you gonna go home dude you're gonna go talk to your parents who are now divorced because you like aired their grievances on TV. So everyone stays. And then the men are kind of like getting nervous. How, who's coming? And there's a moment before, and Taisha shows up. Taisha looks amazing. Taisha is a breath of fresh air, in my opinion. Um, it, it, it kind of, all you think about, you're like, oh, good. We're not going to get like some, you know, this person who, who deals in the economy of sad and victimhood. And it's like, I'm gonna get a fun, young soul that's ready to meet someone and have a good time. So Taisha looks great and amazing. And then there's one moment where one of the men is like, well, what if I'm not attractive to her? And it's like, dude, this is, it's so funny to me. I, every man in America is like that. It doesn't matter how good or bad looking, every man is like, I don't know, man, I hope she's hot. You know, and it's like, it could be the ugliest, fattest, grossest dude in the world. And he's like, I don't know, man, if she ain't hot to me, I'm going to have to leave. Like, you know, I got to be, I got to get mine. And it's like, dude, what do you think? Who goes in The Bachelor? Who goes on The Bachelor? What do you think? They're going to just, out of left field, they're going to bring someone that we're all going to debate whether they're hot or not? No, they're fucking hot. Taisha walks in to be continued. That's our episode. An editor's episode. It could have happened in the span of time that it took me to review this show. Let's go to our guest. I'm so excited to have her. Kay Brown, come on up. Hey, hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm fine. I'm super excited to be here. This is amazing. Kay, if any of you don't follow Kay, go on Instagram, at Kay York City. Her podcast is the best bachelor podcast out there it's called the bachelor the the, the 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 bachelor and it's on all the podcast apps right go listen to the bachelor she's got all the greatest interviews the best recaps everything i've been a guest in the show okay give me what and you're on the west coast now so you had you've watched the episode correct i've watched the episode i actually ended up buying a vpn so i can watch it on east coast time <laughs> listen <laughs> <laughs> you're you're running from the law. I love I it. I know, I know. But like, this is uh, it was important because like I hated watching the first episode, like the premiere on West Coast time. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? Like, I I I can't. Well, also, you're watching like Twitter go by, and it's almost like it's like Twitter talking about a train 
that's two stops ahead of you. You're like, I don't want to hear about what the train looks like. I want to see it. I want to get hit by it. I know. And um, now I know what the West Coast feels like when we're posting this stuff in real time, you know, live memeing and tweeting and stuff. And they're like, what the fuck? Like, don't, you're spoiling it. But I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, it's no, four. It's four o'clock here, and I'm trying to end my day at work and not hear you and like going la 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 la. And it's like, <laughs> how do you? And it's like unavoidable sometimes. So yeah, okay. I want to get your. So I'm, I'm so happy you're here because I think you're the perfect person to talk to to kind of put the Claire thing to rest. We have to tuck it in, wish it goodbye. So what yeah. did you think of Claire on The Bachelor? What was your feeling vibe? How did you feel about her being on the show? Well, at the beginning, I was really excited about Claire because I was like, okay, you know what? She's older. She's going to bring in older guys. Like, this is a different vibe than what we've been used to because, like, on Peter's yeah. season, it was, like, 22-year-olds, 23-year-olds. And I'm ready to, like, see someone who actually is ready to be married and ready to be in a relationship and knows what they want. But then yeah. I think... The problem, at least what I had with Claire during the episode or during the season is because we were a little like fatigued because we knew what was going to happen. We knew Tasha was coming on. And so watching mm -hmm. Claire only focus on the sky, like we already, everything was spoiled. So I think if we didn't know that and we watched this, this with like fresh eyes, I don't think we would have um, disliked Claire as much. But I think because we knew what was going to happen, all we're doing is like, okay, when when are we bringing Tasha on? Like, let's get this fucking over with. You know what I mean? Yeah. When do we get to the show that we love? Yeah. We're now watching a show we've already heard about. I'm not a big spoiler guy. People send yeah. me spoilers. I block them right away, to tell you the truth. I go, full block. You're out. I'm not going to deal with you because I'm looking to experience the show. And because this was an open spoiler, it did kind of feel like, okay, we're waiting on the on the inevitable. All these guys, whatever screen time they get with her is like, we're in la la land. There's no reality here, right? And then it's like, yeah. and then you get to like her and Dale scenes and it's like, you do, and now they're kind of lying to us because we also want to know how did they get so close so quick? Like there's a lot of single people who watch this show where it's like, Claire is sitting there, and now I'm just like kind of putting this together. Claire's supposed to be this heroic figure of someone that didn't settle, of someone that's been through the dating trials and tribulations. Then she gets on the show and she goes, oh my God, it just happened. And it's like, don't tell us that's the end of your story because don't be the person that's like, no, I'm waiting for the right one and I'm going to make sure they meet my standards and then go, when you know, you know, you can't say that. People no. who meet in high school go, when you know what you know. People who meet in high school go, when you know what you know. It's like, oh, you knew in biology class in sixth grade? Go fuck yourself. That's not an adult way to talk about relationships. And we were expecting an adult on the show, right? Yeah, and it was very much, um, it felt whiny. And like, and I kind of felt, um, you know, uh, like slighted because you know watching her be like can we hurry this up like um i just want to spend time with dale like i'm like i regardless like i want to see what happens with the other guys and like see how they yeah. have like feelings for you or whatnot and i think also if we didn't know that it was dale i think we would have given it a little extra time but the fact that we knew who it was we knew she was leaving we knew she was being replaced by claire i think all of that um really messed up um our views of claire and um, yeah. we I, yeah, can, I don't know. I, we, I, sorry to interrupt, but I, we can watch our roommate have their love story on Instagram and on our couch. We've seen yeah. that story. That mm -hmm. is not interesting to us on a TV show. The TV show, the concept is 31 people dating one person. And if we're going to do that, we want to do that. We don't want. Do I look crazy? Hey, I, I, there's a little bit. Of, okay, now you're back. <laughs> Claire interrupted this show probably. I, I, she was probably like, no, they will not ruin my love story. I, and again, also, Claire came on with this story of like, show up, just show up. She came on with a catchphrase. There's a difference, and I do believe this, between tell me and show me. She did a lot of telling, not a lot of showing. She, you know, she had her moment with Juan Pablo. She had a nice, she had a strong moment with Yosef. But beyond that, the other guys didn't really deserve to be told how strong and independent she was. 
Right. I agree. You know? And, yeah. I also think Go ahead. One, one thing that I, this is like a kind of like a side note, but I do applaud um, ABC's like marketing on this. The fact that they never gave in to the rumor until now, you know, it's like they weren't trying to cover it up. They just weren't talking about it. So when Taysha yes. got out of that limo uh, or uh, come at, came out of the pool last week, we all like fucking died because we're like, yeah. yes, it was like this instant like gratification. Like we all like came at the same time. Like she should get out of the pool and same with her. Getting out was, of the you're exactly right. They gave everyone their moment mm -hmm. and they gave, they gave Claire her moment. Yeah. They said, you want to be, you want to push this whole thing. We're going to give you the stage. You know, Tasha shows up like she's, uh, you know, Captain Marvel at the end of Avengers, you know, like, <laughs> and everyone's like, ah, and it's like, you know, she crashes through the water and you're like, Thanos is dead. You know, like, thank yeah. God she's here. And you're right. You're absolutely right. It was a fantastic moment. Now, what, you know, where does the season go? How do you think Taisha? what is your, you know, your feeling as a bachelorette expert, as a person who loves the show? How do you think, have you met Taisha? Do you know her? Do you have any relationship with her? Because I know you are someone who knows a lot of these former contestants. Yeah. So what can we, what can we expect from, from Taisha? Okay. So I do know Taisha. Um, her and I started talking uh, back when she was on Colton season. Oh yeah. Colton season. Yeah. Been DMing and all this kind of stuff. I was actually just on her podcast last week or the week before. Um, and did you have to sign any contracts? Do you have to, do you no. have to, is there things that can't be said? So what was wild? So it's the, it's their clickbait podcast with Joe grocery store, Joe and Hannah Ann and Tasha. And, um, okay. we were on that podcast and they asked us, they're like, what do you think of the season so far? And I'm like, oh, it's, it's good. Like, it's all right. Like, I didn't want to bring up you her. Tell I, me. I know. I'm like, um, you know, like has anything like what's your, what's the craziest part? And I'm like, you like you're like it's you <laughs> but i didn't say that because i didn't want to like you know spoil anything for their podcast whatever sure. um but i do think she is going to be a great um bachelorette she's super fun literally the nicest person on the planet the nicest great. like friendliest person um i'm i don't i think john paul jones is like um an oops <laughs> because i've heard a lot of people <laughs> talk about how they're like Oh, well, Tasha picked John Paul Jones. Like, he's dumb. Like, I question her taste in men. I, I I don't think that people should be judged by the dating. Like, again, I guess you, I don't know. I The idea that you're like, she dated who on the reality show on the deserted yeah. island when there were four choices? It's like, get off your high horse at that point. Like, what would you do on the on the island with six beautiful men and one of them's named John Paul Jones and he comes up to you? And it's like, what? who's beyond that? Who's above that? Yeah, I know. I totally so, agree. But I think she's going to be a great bachelorette. Um, I'm nervous to see, like, what they end up doing with the guys. Yes, these guys are staying, but, like, so does she get less men to choose from? Or are they bringing more back? So or like what's happening? I kind of like the idea of less men to choose from because now we're going to get more dates with more guys. We're going to get to meet more of these guys that we never met before. There were characters showing up towards the end of the, like at the end of this episode that I was like, oh, you're still here? Like, right. dude, like Ed, you're here still? Like Dr. Joe, he's, he's I like- still can't name any of these guys. Like I could name like two or three of them. The rest I'm like, I've never seen you before. I've never seen you before. Like who the mm -hmm. hell is this? So it's going to be interesting to see new personalities come out. It's going to be yeah. like easy. I knew, I knew Bennett. I knew like, and, and you know, like Jordan, but they all seem to be producer people who like push along storylines. So that's how I think about Blake. Like, you know, Blake mm. uh, he's having this meltdown and at the end of the show. He's like super torn about it, but I don't, like, I don't know if he'll stay right, like very face forward in this, in this season, because he was there for Claire. And so like, they're going to bring Tasha on and we're going to have the same exact storyline with Tasha. It might seem sus. Yeah. I, I, it, it, but that's kind of the fun part that now we get to like, if Blake comes in going, well, this is the one for me, then it's like, now it becomes a psychological study on Blake. That's even more fun actually to me. Yeah. Oh, I, I agree. I agree. I'm excited to see like what, who she chooses and like, 
Um, I have some guys that I have that I think will be really great for her, but I don't, you know, it's hard to tell. Listen, you're going to hear all of Kay's uh, Bachelor opinions on The Bachelor. It's going to come out tomorrow. Her podcast is fantastic. Everyone here should go follow Kay on Instagram at Kay York City. Kay, this is so great to talk with you about The Bachelor. I love what, everything you do. I'm such a fan. So thank you for coming on. Thank you so much, Equal Fan. I love your um, your scream recaps. Like that is <laughs> gives me life. So keep giving Thank me you. the content to post. <laughs> I got you. So listen, ever go check out the Bachelor. Thank you, Kay. Let's give out some awards. Now we do the batches. Um, now the batches is where I give out roses to the three best characters from the episode and divorce papers to the three worst okay i'm gonna start with uh the divorce papers because i just know who they are right away okay um the first one goes to claire claire the amount of storytelling she was doing on the fly it's just like we get it it's time for you to go. I'm happy to give you divorce paper on this episode. I'm happy to see you leave the show. I'm happy to see the end of your arc. I, I got to, it, it's over with Claire. Um, and and it, it was nice knowing you, but good to see you. Okay. The second one, it's got to go to Blake. Or, no, yeah, Blake. Blake was wrong every single time he spoke to the camera. Blake literally said, Nothing right. Blake, they'd be like, he'd be like, no, there's no way that this woman is dating Dale. And there's also no way the earth is heating up right now. It's cooling down. There's no evidence for climate change. You're like, Blake, you are. Uh, and then he's like so upset that Claire's leaving as if they had this real relationship. Blake, you've either done what Claire did with Dale's Instagram account or... You're out of your mind. Like, I mean, there's only two choices. The third set of divorce papers, it's got to go to Dale. Dale, um, the idea that he's fallen in love is just like, I I just think him and Claire are lying. I don't think that they had no contact. There's, there's, no, there's no really chance that he could have been, you know, not in cahoots with her. So I'm happy to see Dale and I'm happy to see... Um, Claire, go. Blake, I'm happy that he stayed because I want to see, as Kay said, I want to see if he falls in love with anyone that falls in front of him. Roses. Um, Got to give it. The first one I'm going to give is Taisha. Taisha, you looked amazing. She was a breath of fresh air. Taisha's three minutes on the show were more fun than all of the minutes Claire had combined. There was no fun. Even when Claire was like, strip down to your boxers, boys, for some dodgeball, even that came off weird. Taisha is fun. She's smi just her smile I was happy to see. Um, the next rose I'm going to give is to Open Shirt Dude. I don't know his name, but Open Shirt Dude was there. The minute he knew, the guy who wears a lot of V-necks down to his navel and always unbuttons his shirt, um, he, what I liked about him is he questioned Claire and questioned the show. The minute Claire was out, he was like, okay, I'm free to ask some fucking questions. And he had a right to ask those questions, even though that other dude threw him under the bus to make him look bad. He got to like, open shirt dude was just like, hey, I can, I can, like, I can start to air some grievances. And he spoke for the audience. The last rose is going to go to Chris Harrison. Chris Harrison, an amazing job tonight. Chris Harrison was on point. He played the friend. He played the dad. He played the, I'm going to get you engaged. It is Chris Harrison. He has the job that I want the most, but it would I could never live up to how well he does the job. He is so good. 
he's sitting there with Claire being like, oh, did you say you loved him? And she, and it's like, uh, he knows the questions to ask. He knows when to be tough Chris Harrison. He knows when to be soft Chris Harrison. He knows when to be your dad giving you away to your engagement Chris Harrison. Tonight was a, was really a clinic put on by Chris Harrison. And that's it. I'm Jared Freed. That's the Rose Rehash. We're here every episode of The Bachelorette. Keep sharing. Make comments. I want you to subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to the channel. Make comments. That helps us in the algorithm. If you're new here, find me on Instagram. You can watch the full live screen. We'll be back next episode. Boom.